Hello everyone, it's Tron here. Today we wanted to talk about how players are going to be able to create smart contracts in Parsec Frontiers. In order to make this feature widely accessible, we want to create a visual scripting system. So this also has the benefits of uh, making it much more readable as well as less prone to errors. You can see on my screen here our existing scripting tool which we already used to create the game itself. And in the first example, we wanted to set up the governing of a jump gate that we just built. The default, of course, will be to use a standard contract for a gate, but let's say that I built this with my guild and we have some special requirements, so let's make our own this time. Since by default the jump gate will have a parsec fee tied to its use, the first thing I want to do is make sure that anyone in my guild can use it for free. So what I'm doing here is setting up a whitelist for those players, so let's say it's Jack Attack, The Rockling, and of course Psych Out. There we go. So now, as soon as they enter the gate, they will instantly be granted access to jump. Yeah, and let's send in myself as well, so I don't feel so left out. There we go. When players try to enter the gate, I can also check what guild they belong to, so I don't have to enter all names manually. So that gives me a lot of range, right? If I, for example, have four friends or business partners here on the left, that I want to grant access regardless. But for anyone else, I want to check that they are actually still members of my guild. Equally, if let's say that we, for instance, are at war with another faction, I want to make sure that they can't use the gate even if they pay for it. So let's set up a deny list here that excludes them from accessing the gate. So we have made sure that Milky Way is a slightly safer place. And now finally, of course, for anyone else trying to access the gate, we want to allow them to pass through, but they have to pay for it. To do that, I simply drag out the request here for Parsec credits. The game server will check if you have received the, the correct payment, and then it will grant access to use the gate. So a system like this gives a lot of power, even to people that aren't programmers. And I could go a lot deeper here as well. Like for example, if we have an allied guild, I could give them a discount. Uh, I could have a trading partner that pays us an upfront fee, but in exchange, it's cheap for, for them to use the gate over time and so on and so on. I'm sure that you guys have a lot about this and you're really excited to work with this and get your input on it. To give you guys some better understanding of the variety of this kind of system, we wanted to show you a second example. This one is a little bit more technical, and of course, usability is something that we will continue to test and work on, as we want as many people as possible to be able to use this. Let's pretend that there's this really persistent player that's been terrorizing our mining colonies. Let's call him Bill, and we want him taken care of. Now, me myself, I'm not much of a warrior, so what I'm going to do is to issue a 100,000 parsec bounty for anyone that can take care of Bill in the next 24 hours. The first step I'm going to take is to make an action, and it locks in the bond of 100,000 parsecs. The next thing I'm going to do is to create something called an event. And when this triggers, something else is going to happen. Of course, what I want to trigger it is when the player named Bill is getting killed. Let's just enter his name here, and we have created our first event. Now this will of course only trigger if the player that dies is in fact Bill. And what we want to happen next is that the bond get transferred to whoever killed him. So you can see that I'm adding a wildcard player account here, and I'm linking it to whichever account I in fact killed Bill, and that player account will in turn receive the full payment of the bond. Whenever this has triggered, the contract has been fulfilled and I'm satisfied. So I'm going to issue an end command, which destroys the contract, preventing anyone else from completing it, and also preventing anything else running on the contract from happening. So what will happen if the contract is not fulfilled? Well, as it stands right now, it will be open forever, but I want to set the 24 hour time limit. So what will happen is if no one has collected the bounty by that time, we simply release the bounty again. By ending the contract after this event as well, what will happen is that whichever of these two events triggers first will cancel out the other one and make sure it won't happen. Either someone is going to kill Bill and collect a bounty, or the bounty will be released again. Whichever of these two happens, honestly, I'm happy. One of the things we hope to achieve is that we don't only make it easier to script these kind of contracts for players, 
We also want to make it more readable for others so that you can clearly see what the conditions are, for example, for using a jump gate, for collecting the bounty on the contract, and that you always have full information of what kind of agreement you're going into. I hope that you enjoyed this early demonstration, and of course, feel free to ask questions or give feedback on Twitter, Discord, or YouTube, and we really look forward to seeing what you guys think.